Hey guys, it's Michael here from Love Law, and thanks as always for watching the channel. If you've been watching for a little while, you know I have a penchant for nice things, for quality, for precision, for all the good stuff that we like to bring together in lawnmowers to make for a better lawn. So in today's video, we're going to focus in on some of that. Uh, we're heading down to Pinjara to hang out with Shane Costison from Motac Machining and Cylinder Mowers. And in the video, we'll, you'll see in a minute, um, Shane takes us through his process for um, manufacturing uh, the reels that he sells. Now, these are, you know, fully um, custom handmade by Shane, and they're they're pretty pretty nice reels. You know, it's a, it was a pretty cathartic experience for me, sort of making this video with Shane. I know how silly that sounds, how yoga, whatever the hippie that sounds, but um, it, it really was um, a privilege for me to hang out with Shane as a craftsman um, and, you know, get a deeper understanding of how he puts these things together. So just wanted to preface the video, I guess, by saying that it's a bit of a longer form video than um, some of the stuff that you may be used to on the channel. So might suggest you get your socks and slippers on, get comfy, get some popcorn, whatever, get a drink, um, tell your partner that you're busy for the next 20 odd minutes, and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, there's lots uh, lots of interesting sort of facets to uh, you know Shane's approach, approach to manufacturing um, his canted blade reels. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're pretty nice. If you're in the market for a reel, you might want to, you know, take a, take a careful look at Shane's offering because they're pretty competitively priced for, for what they are. And, um, yeah, they're, they're a very nice reel. So without further ado, I'm going to step back. We're going to head down to Pinjara, catch up with Shane and hear from him exactly how it is that he goes about manufacturing his reels. Um, we did do a video a while back about the sharpening process, the, you know, how Shane handles that, um, you know, approaches sharpening a reel on his lathe. Uh, I'll link to that in the video. You can take a look at that as well if you'd like. It's quite interesting. Um, and again, you just some really cool information coming direct from the horse's mouth as to, you know, how he goes about doing this sort of thing. So um, I will leave you there. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you um, you know want to see more videos like this. Always appreciated. It. It's free. Really helps the channel out. So always you know a great help. And thank you to all of those all of you who have subscribed already. Uh, of course, you can hit like at any point through the video. That really helps us out as well. And we love comments, questions, um, feedback of any sort down below on YouTube in the comments section. Um, always great to hear from viewers and um, yeah, really appreciate all of you guys. So let's head down to Pinjara, fire up Shane and uh, get into this one. Thanks guys. Just an insight, Michael, on how reels are made here at MMCM. The most difficult thing that I make is a reel. They're very, very time consuming to um, get to the, to the uh, state that I have them in at the moment, which I think they're they're pretty good, but it's mm. something that I constantly um, review and try and develop. So a reel starts off with a blank, and that's 4140, cut to near the correct length, and that's one inch diameter, as opposed to the three quarter of a standard. And that's a change that you've reel. made over the over the years yeah. to yeah, I went from three quarter to seven eight to one inch. Yeah. And there's quite a few advantages in that in keeping a reel straight when you manufacture it. Mm -hmm. So once the shaft is made in the CNC, so there's the non-drive end, mm -hmm. and there's the drive end, and they're all done on the Cincinnati CNC, two axis machine. Yep. So and all the all the threading, the not the keyway. The keyway I still do manually. Yeah. The keyways the will be done on the new machine in time. Uh -huh. um, but threading, everything's done on Cincinnati. So pretty much it comes out like that, apart from the Woodruff key slot, which I will do manually yeah. on the Bridgeport milling machine. Um, so then we have the discs, which are laser cut, and they may be um, 8 or 10 blade. Mm -hmm. I don't do a 6 and don't do a 12. Only a, an 8 and a 10 are the only options. Did you used to do a six? No, yeah. I've never built a six. Never built a six. I don't see the need for a six. The eight's uh, a great upgrade from a six, and the ten is a further upgrade, but not as noticeable from a six when you know going to an eight. Mm -hmm. So they're the discs. Normally, the standard disc in in other people's reels, a three mil, mm -hmm. I've upgraded that to four mil. 
So it's a thickness, thickness of plate, of the material, thickness of yep. foil mill. Yeah. Yep, it's just mild steel. Yeah. Then I've incorporated this step here. Yep. So that that disc, yep, locates correctly on that shoulder. Mm -hmm. And that's important. I do that both ends. Yep. Because these want to move around when you actually assemble the reel. Right, yep. So the next thing that happens is that goes in there. And then that's fully TIG welded. So just around the joint between the plate and the yes. and the yep. shaft, yeah? To the shaft. So that'll come out as one complete unit. Yep. We then put it back in this way. And taking this tool, we mark the spacing out little, of where the discs are going to sit. The little marking jig that you've made here yeah. in the shop. Yeah. Yep. Um, and this is a 20 inch reel, mm -hmm. so it's got the extra disc. And then from there, the disc with the inch hole yep. are all loaded onto this. And then the other seven, eight, four disc is placed on the end. Yep. So then this is ready for assembly. So this will then go into the Colchester, the little Colchester here. So you've not welded those additional discs at no, this stage? they're all floating, they're floating, right? The only disc at this point in time welded is this one. Yep. So that'll go into Colchester like that. Mm -hmm. And then, we'll just put it in there. So that'll go in with the discs all in place. Yep. Then the arduous part of making a reel is the spiral or the blade. Oh yeah. And so, so these these come to you in this shape, is that? That's exactly that how they come. Yeah. I buy them like that. Yeah. The only problem with them is they never spiral correctly nor evenly. Mm -hmm. This one's not too bad, but that angle there has to be ten degrees mm -hmm. from horizontal, mm -hmm. and they've all got to be the same, and that becomes an issue. I've re-spiraled these ones, but there you see an issue straight away. So you match all, all the blades on the reel? All the blades, yeah. To I'll, each other, don't you? Yes, I will spend a considerable amount of time manipulating these blades. You can see how that's... Yeah. See the difference in the blade? Yeah. I will manipulate those blades so they'll all sit flat on each other. Yeah. And that's critical to keep the reel straight when you build it. Mm. Because you get one reel, um, sorry, one blade that upsets the rest of them, it'll bend that shaft mm. and you end up building a reel that's bent. Yeah. And if you have a look at a lot of standard reels, and I see them in here every day, sharpening them, they can have two mil wobble in the middle. So these are the, the, like Ch this. the Chinese made reels, are they? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Mm. Um, now, that's not as bad as it sounds, so long as the bearing diameter is run true. Mm -hmm. Very hard to build something like this that's fabricated um, and with all the welding that takes place to keep them straight. Mm -hmm. So what happens then is once I've got and, and, and happy with the blades, here's the set down here that I've probably spent time with. There you go there. Now I've spent a fair bit of time getting those as close as I can. You can see this one odd, two odd ones out there. Mm -hmm. And I've marked them all, so they're all numbered. And I'll bend these ends here so that they'll all sit flat. Because mm -hmm. if I put them in like that, it'll influence that shaft and bend it when you it's incredible. load it up. It is yeah. amazing. Took me a fair bit of working out to figure out why the things were bent. Yeah. Um, then what happens basically is one blade gets loaded at a time, and, and what happens is when you load them, all the blades in, if it's not 
got the right helix or spiral, whatever you'd like to call it, yeah. what happens is it sits down in, in the bottom of the slot here yeah. and the bottom of the slot there and sits up yeah. that high. So, so it doesn't bottom out. In the it spot. doesn't bottom out. So obviously you're going to build a reel that's bellowed. Yeah. So to um, eliminate that, you've got to have the correct spiral on the blade. So when the blade sits in, it bottoms out on all yeah. the discs and they're all the same. Yeah. So then once it's loaded up, I band it. And here's two 20s banded here, ready to weld. So there's a 2010, which is a real mission to make a 2010. That's a 10 blade, 20 inch. That's a 10 blade, 20 inch. Yeah, it looks... This is the second one I've only made. Um, certainly not cheap. I don't think anybody's ever made a 2010, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, this is a more normal um, uh, 28 blade. So they're banded and, and straight out of the cold chest of these will then go into my jig on the bench and they'll be welded. And they've got to be sequence welded. Mm -hmm. Critical, the sequence that you weld these in. Because if you just started welding one side, you'll bend it like a banana. So what do, you, what do you mean by sequence welding? That's sequence welding means working you, progressively yeah, you in distribute, sequence? Distribute the heat evenly um, around the diameter and the length. So there's a, there's a formula for that. Um, and I've modified that formula, spent a lot of time welding these things together <laughs> to find out the, the, the best way to do it, yeah. to eliminate the bending. And even if I put a reel together that's got a very slight bend in it, I can mark it on the Colchester and I can change the sequence and how I weld it and pull that bend down. Oh, wow, that's, a, that's incredible. So, yeah, th these are just, uh, <laughs> this is why it takes so long to make one. Yeah. So once it's all welded, then it goes outside. I put a jig on each blade and each blade is cut with a skinny disc yep. to, um, to a certain length, both ends. Then... The reel comes back in here and it gets tipped upside down in the vise, so it's pointing up. Yeah. And then I'll weld the discs in sequence again to the shaft. So the discs are welded last after the blades are welded? Yes. <laughs> yep. Um, that, that lets it walk around a little bit, find its own way yeah. without influencing the shaft. Yeah. I'm not that worried about the outside diameter of the reel at this stage. Yeah. They, Inevitably end up around 146 diameter. We're looking at 143 max. 142 and a half to 143 is nice. Um, so the straighter you can make it, the less material that you're going to have to take off when you're to to keep it to the diameter that you want. Yeah. So um, it's it's welded one end, tipped upside down, and then uh, welded in between each weld that you've just performed on the other side. Uh, then it comes out of here, goes back outside where I use this little tool here and take all the sharp edges off. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's 10 or 15 minutes at each reel just, just to do that. Yeah. <laughs> then when that's taken place, it's only then that the reel's ready to start finishing. Yeah. So I've gone through quite a process from a blank CNC bench in the Colchester ready to assemble, sort all the blades out, manipulate all the blades so they're as even as you possibly can get them and they're helix correctly. Yeah. Then load it into the reel on the Colchester. It's just a fixture to do that with. Yeah. Then out of the Colchester, they find their way onto my brilliant ladder stand, <laughs> uh, awaiting um the welding procedure yeah but to weld those two reels there are tig weld i don't mig weld very much at all <laughs> um they're all tig welded or i can control the heat that's the machine here yeah um i have got infinite control over over the machine the length of time uh, that the weld takes place to keep the heat away from the the cutting edge of the blade and a, a much stronger neater no weld spatter um absolutely ideal However, um, much better for welding just similar metals as well, which you've got 4140 mild steel, then you've got a, yeah. a spring steel blade, yeah. uh, 44 Rockwell hardness. So you're welding just similar metals. 
Um, so they're all TIG welded, and that takes, if anybody's ever TIG welded, as opposed to me, it takes 10 times the amount of time. Mm. So to weld those two 20s up there, one being a 10, you know, to sit down and sequence weld them correctly, and I don't stop welding, if the phone rings, don't answer it, <laughs> uh, it would take a disaster for me to stop welding, to keep the heat into it. It's a heat management to, thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, to do those a couple of hours at least. Yeah. So once that takes place, um, as I said, we go outside, we trim the ends, um, and then spray them with thinners. <clears throat> then they go into the painting area, and they're hung, warmed up, so, okay, so they're heated, mm -hmm. right, to remove moisture, lint, all that type of thing from the from the reel. Um, and then they're primed, right, so spray, primed. So there's a fair fair bit of time there, mixing paint, mm. applying the primer, cleaning the gun, etc., etc. Yeah. Uh, then it's nice to leave that for several hours, colder weather more. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing a batch of them, it's great to leave them overnight. Then I'll have a look at the prime job and see if that's good, bad, or otherwise. Touch it up here or there. Might have a bit of. A fly might have got onto the whatever. Yep. Just just make sure it's acceptable. Yeah. Um, and then um, mix up the paint. Either satin black. Most people go for satin black. I personally like the signal red. <laughs> the reds are just great. Yeah. Um, and they're painted, and they've got to be left for a day before I do the final machining on them. Otherwise, they'll chip. Yeah. Really bad. Give the, give the paint time to harden. Yeah. And over here. These are two 17s in Signal Red. It does look good, the Signal Red. They look really nice. <laughs> These are ready to have the final cut. So once they're all assembled over there, all the welding takes place. They've got to go into the Colchester and I rough cut the diameter down. Yep. So all the blades are uneven. Um, it can take an hour and a half to two hours just to do that. So that's, that's arguably not part of the, the grinding process. That's almost part of the construction process still. Yeah, isn't I it? don't grind anything here. Yeah. Um, bed knives. So I mean, uh, lathe, yeah. lathe cutting. Yeah, um, with, with a machine cut. So there's a fair bit of time. And if the reel's nice and straight, um, it will, even now it's still slightly tacky and they were painted yesterday. Um, um, Yeah, the machine cutting process takes quite some time. Yeah, yeah. And it's noisy, uh, it's messy. <laughs> so we've just done a program to put them in the Cincinnati. That's so the, uh, they will go in this yeah, one. Yeah. They will go into this machine here. They will go into there and it will perform that roughing process. Yeah. Um, and the finishing, because once roughing is done um, and, and the reel is nice and even, uh, I rough them with a certain radius insert um, and they're a specific insert, extremely expensive uh, and they don't last that long. Uh, a lot of experimentation to find the right mm. um, inserts and the setup and the way I do them. Um, so once rough cutting takes place, then they're ready to prime and paint. I think I missed that out before. They're ready to prime and paint. So they go out primed, painted, then they're ready for the final finishing. So eventually we might look at doing them in here. The problem with that is it's coolant. You're finishing them in, in yeah. the Cincinnati? Yeah, I'd like to finish cut them on here because it would be just 100% accurate. Yeah. The issue with that is they look like that yeah. in this weather we just started the cold weather. They were painted yesterday yeah. and they're still not hard enough to go and really put in the cold chester and finish. Yeah. So with coolant running all over them, it's going to discolor the paint and it's going to look rather yeah. messy. You could paint it all first, finish cut it, sorry, uh, then, then paint it all and then get some thinners and wipe over the edge. It's just too long, too messy. <laughs> yep. So the finishing will still get done in the cold chester which is fine. 
Um, and once they're finished, then stainless steel bearing shields yep. go on, Japanese bearings go on, yep. then they go over to here. And then place in my test bed. Yeah. All right. Um, and then they're set up, and I have to produce this. Yep. Each reel, brand new reel, is set here with no contact to cut paper. If it doesn't, it goes into the reject area, and I'll attend to that. Yep. I've never done that yet, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> so that that's basically the final process. Um, I send a video to the to the new owner of the reel, showing them the contactless paper cut, so they know that the product they're buying can do that. Yeah. If it doesn't for them, there's something wrong with the way they're doing it. Yeah. And they can contact me, and I can help them with that, talk them through it, whatever, because um, there is a process to setting a reel up. Guys are doing it all the time, no problem. The novices out there can struggle with it. Yeah. But every new reel that leaves here will cut paper with no contact. Yeah. And I'm sure many people have seen my videos yeah. on that. Yeah. So that, that's the final process. So all that is what goes into a reel. You know? <laughs> uh, so it's not a five minute job. Yes, right down to buying not, six metre lengths of material, then all that's got to be cut to the right length. Yeah. One end's done into CNC first, then they're measured, and then um, the, the, the exact length is determined then they've got to be faced off to that exact length before the process starts. So it's not a five minute job. Yes. And when you have a lot of reels to build, which I can do uh, at some point in time, as just recently, since Christmas, I've been flooded with reels. Um, there's a lot of time there, yeah. a lot of time. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, 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 the twenties are given they're longer. They just tend to want to bend more mm. or more readily bend. So you've got to take a bit more time and care in manufacturing those. Yeah, and I think the uh, the proof is in the pudding, though, as you say, though, isn't it? In terms of the the finished product, it's uh, it's sort of worth yeah. worth the effort. I think. Yeah, so, I had a customer of mine. I think I think either Sydney or Queensland, um, elderly chap. Um, he rang me and said, "Look, I've just received my reel." Queensland it was. He said, "I've just received my reel." And he said, I just wanted to ring you and talk to you personally. He said, I don't know if I can put this in my mower. <laughs> he said, this is a work of art. He said, thank you very much. This is, he said, I'm just blown away. Yeah, there he said, I've, <laughs> I've been messing with mowers. I'm 72 years old and I've been messing with mowers for a long time. Um, and he said, I've never seen anything like this. This is, this is just outstanding. Yeah. And that's, that's quite... Makes all the hard work, Michael, yeah. worthwhile. Yeah, for sure. And trust me, just building a reel is not easy and takes a cons considerable amount of time. I certainly, I believe, um, earn the money um, that one charges for, for a reel. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's, um, it's, it's been a challenge and I think I can get them better. Yeah. I think I can actually get them better. You're still but, you're still working on them, are you? <laughs> I'm still working on them because I've seen the Chinese stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I've had the Chinese stuff. I found out where they come from in China. <laughs> uh, I know what they cost. Uh, all that sort of stuff. And um, they're different products, though, really, aren't they? They're they're a totally different product. They're they're just um, probably great for mower contractors. Yeah. But the thing is, they're being retailed for the same similar sort of money yeah. to what my reels are. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. At the end of the day, a lot of people look at it as so though I'm just cutting the lawn. Yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. Um, people like um, this customer, that's a full, very expensive fluoro red resto. Mm -hmm. Very fluoro red. And then the one up here behind us, and I know this will be the catcher there, but that's candy apple, sparkle. Um, these guys want. The best and yep. they deserve the best they do and um and they've come to the right place <laughs> well hopefully and uh yeah i've not had someone come back and tell me my reels are junk no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what i wanted to just illustrate is how much time there is in actually producing one of them yeah it's not just as easy as bang 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 and weld it together no. i thought that when i first started boy did i <laughs> Did I? You've learned. You know, I, <laughs> learned. Did I get that horribly wrong, mm -hmm. and then it was a challenge, and then I nearly gave up. And that's when I went to China, found out where they come from, 
how much they cost, how much, all that sort of stuff. And I went, I can't bring myself to put a Chinese reel in one of my mowers. Yeah, fair enough. So I continued on with the development of, of mine and at least um, uh, they're an Aussie product going into our Aussie machine. Yeah. Because 90% of them out there are China. Yeah. And what are you what are you selling in the store now? Are you selling 14s or is it just 17s and 20s? No, 14, 17 and 20. Yeah. Um, eight in a 14. Yeah. I've never been asked for a 10. Not that I say I couldn't build one, but I don't know why you'd want a 10 in a 14. However, um, so 14 in an eight's very popular. The 17 age is extremely popular. Yeah. The 1710 is is second to those two in popularity. The 20s drive me mad, um, <laughs> and particularly the 10s. Um, and they're at a premium price because of the time yeah. associated with welding them and getting them right. Um, uh, they're just a headache to make. All the 20s are a headache to make. Uh, but yeah, 28s, you know, um, reasonably popular. Yeah, cool. So I do, you know, cover the whole areas. Awesome. You know, and frames are another one that aren't easy to make mm. and are time consuming as well. Yeah, yeah. Cool, thanks Shane. Thank you.